Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was asked about whether or not she'd be making an endorsement soon, who she's considering, and whether or not she'd endorse Joe Biden or consider endorsing uh, Joe Biden. Here's what she had to say about that. Endorse the presidential <laughs> race, and specifically whether or not you're going to endorse Port. I mean, what's your thought process on that right now? Well, for me, uh, what what is always so important is to make sure that, for me personally, what I w would like to see in a presidential candidate is one that has a coherent uh, worldview and logic uh, from which all these policy proposals are coming forward. I think Senator Sanders has that. I also think Senator Warren has that. Um, and I also want to see us centering working people in the United States to stem income inequality, tackle climate change, and people who are bold of really big ideas that are going to make people's lives better. So do you think you will endorse during the Democratic primary? Is that something um, you're leaving, at least leaving that option I'm, open? I'm entertaining, but it's not going to be for a while. So. Would you consider Vice President Biden, too? Pardon? Would you consider Vice President Biden? I'm not sure yet. I mean, now it's getting a little so I love how the minute he name dropped Biden, she was like, pardon? <laughs> because ideologically speaking, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Joe Biden are so different that the thought that she'd endorse him over someone like Bernie Sanders or Tulsi Gabbard or Elizabeth Warren is honestly preposterous. And I think she knows it's preposterous, which is why, you know, they uh, <laughs> they decided to not answer that. But she is genuinely struggling about this decision, it appears, whether or not she'll endorse Bernie or Elizabeth Warren. And on one hand, part of me wants to give her a pass, but the other part of me is irritated, if I'm being honest. Because on one hand, this isn't the same as 2016, right? We were presented with two very different options. Hillary Clinton, who was right-wing, and Bernie Sanders, who was a social Democrat. So if you are progressive, if you're someone like Elizabeth Warren, it's not even a question. You obviously would opt for someone who you ideologically align with. But in this situation, I get that it is a little bit different. Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren are two fairly progressive options that she's considering. I'm not honestly sure why Tulsi Gabbard isn't even a consideration for her, but with that being said, she doesn't talk much about foreign policy, so maybe just that's something that doesn't appeal to her. I wish Tulsi was part of her consideration, but nonetheless, you know, there are different options. There's more progressives. You know, if you, if you don't opt for Bernie because you support Warren, I would disagree with that, but at least I could see how it could be rationalized. Whereas back in 2016, there's no way to rationalize endorsing Hillary over Bernie if you're progressive, unless you're only looking out for your own career. But I believe that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, she's not just a careerist. She's someone who actually cares deeply about the issues. So I get that. However, on the opposite side of the same coin, Really, AOC? <laughs> I mean, she was a staffer for Bernie Sanders in 2016. And even if the difference between Bernie and Warren is substantially smaller than the differences between Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders, still, Bernie Sanders is Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren is diet Bernie Sanders. Elizabeth Warren lacks the courage to get any of her goals accomplished. I don't believe that she would deliver Medicare for All to us because she co-sponsored the bill and any time an interviewer brings it up and asks her about it, she runs away from it and says, well, you know, I also co-sponsored a public option bill and, you know, dropping the age of Medicare to 55. So she's someone who, ideologically speaking, I think that she has a lot of great ideas. She's constantly coming up with new innovative policy positions, but what we need is to fundamentally change the system, and I just don't believe that Warren would do that, whereas Bernie Sanders wants to do that. Elizabeth Warren would introduce several policies that I think would drastically improve many lives of Americans, but if you don't get that reform on a broad level, you're, you're just not doing much. And that's really the key difference between Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. Sunkara did a really phenomenal article about this where he outlines these differences. You know, Bernie Sanders 
is more socialistic to his core, whereas Elizabeth Warren, she was formerly a Republican. And that was a long time ago. She certainly gets a pass for that, but she still describes herself as a capitalist. So these are very important things that you should consider if you're someone like AOC, who self-identifies as a democratic socialist. So on one hand, I get it, there are more progressives running this time, but on another hand, still, it's obvious that Bernie is the answer. Bernie is the individual who will deliver what we all want. So if she doesn't endorse Bernie Sanders, I will be thoroughly disappointed. However, I, coming into 2020, set my expectations extremely low, like they're on the ground. Because after 2016, when Elizabeth Warren didn't endorse Bernie Sanders and she left him hanging in Massachusetts when that could have made the difference, I, I told myself, you're not going to get your hopes up, otherwise you will be disappointed. There's no heroes in politics, and if we understand that going into 2020, mentally speaking, we'll all be better off. Myself included, yourself included. So I wasn't even expecting Ro Khanna to endorse Bernie, and then I was pleasantly surprised when it was announced that he'd be a national co-chair for Bernie Sanders. So my expectations are very low, but I think it is obvious that the person who she should endorse is Bernie Sanders. And if she doesn't endorse during the primary, I think that will be really disappointing for a lot of progressives. Really disappointing. Now, with that being said, doesn't make sense for her just from a strategic standpoint to wait to endorse. I think so. Because for me, if I'm in her position, if I'm a lawmaker, I wouldn't un endorse unless I secured some type of concession, whatever that may be. So maybe she wants to wait to endorse to see if Elizabeth Warren surges or if she really does peter out. I think that that would make sense and that could potentially explain why she's waiting. And another reason is that she's just, you know, genuinely torn. But with that being said, it's obvious the correct answer is Bernie Sanders. She knows it. She worked for Bernie Sanders, so I hope that she does the right thing. But with that being said, there's an article from the New York Post by Lee Brown that talks about Elizabeth Warren and why she is now aggressively going after an AOC endorsement, because AOC is someone with a lot of political capital. She has name recognition. She's highly popular. So if you can secure an AOC endorsement, you're getting a boost. So here's what Lee Brown writes about Senator Elizabeth Warren. Senator Elizabeth Warren is making an aggressive pitch, Politico says, having met with AOC privately and written a gushing essay about her for Time magazine, perhaps referring to herself when she wrote, millions are taking cues from her. Really, Warren? You gave us the cold shoulder back in 2016. You wouldn't endorse Bernie Sanders. You left him hanging. And now, when it's convenient for you, you want progressives to support you. You want someone literally from Bernie Sanders' campaign in 2016 to support you after you didn't have the courage to endorse someone who was obviously more closer to you ideologically. So I see this, and I think, I mean, the nerve. What would make you think that you deserve an endorsement over Bernie Sanders from AOC? I mean, and look, part of me is trying to put my feelings aside here, right? Facts over feelings, as <laughs> another soy boy says, because if you just separate what Warren did and how she betrayed progressives in 2016, how she is running away from Medicare for All, how she refused to go to Standing Rock, if you put that aside, she's a good politician, right? She is the second most progressive senator. There's a lot of great things about Elizabeth Warren. So if you put aside your feelings, yeah, you know, there's value there. And hopefully we can all move on from 2016. But with that being said, realistically speaking, there are so many progressives, people who I know personally, who can't move on. Because what she did was such a betrayal that it makes it really difficult to see past her unwillingness to support us in 2016. And I believe it's more than just her betraying us in 2016. If she didn't have the courage to make an easy decision then, then will she fight for us if she's in the White House? And I think that's what people are genuinely conflicted with when it comes to Elizabeth Warren. Now, did she probably wait to endorse Hillary because she thought Hillary would win and wanted some leverage or some type of policy concession in the event Hillary became president? Sure. But you can't call yourself a real progressive 
if you're not willing to get people elected into powerful positions who are willing to fight for what you and I believe in. So on one hand, I feel like it's important that we put aside our feelings, but on another hand, it still does speak volumes to the way in which I think Warren would govern in the event she's elected president. And I just don't think she has a lot of political courage, which is incredibly sad. But I don't want to make this about Bernie versus Warren because I do feel like it's really important for progressives to stay united because Warren isn't the enemy. And if you're supporting Warren, Bernie isn't the enemy. Tulsi Gabbard isn't the enemy. Andrew Yang isn't the enemy. Marianne Williamson is not the enemy. We have one very big enemy. We have a common enemy regardless of who you support. And that individual is Joe Biden because like it or not, Maybe we underestimated him. He poses a fairly large threat. And this is only the beginning, right? So he could, you know, um, eventually die out. The momentum could dissipate. But with that being said, he may be more out of touch than Hillary Clinton. But I think that he is at least more talented as a politician than Hillary Clinton because he knows what to say to drum up these feelings of nostalgia that can win people over. Like if you go to his YouTube channel... The next ad that he posted was a video of Obama saying really nice things about Joe Biden. He knows exactly what to do. He's playing on your emotions on a really visceral level. So regardless if you support Tulsi or Warren or Williamson or Yang, we all have a common enemy. And that person is Joe Biden. And we all need to unite to defeat him. So... Going back to AOC, do I hope she makes the right decision and endorses Bernie Sanders, who's a social democrat? Of course I do. If she does not, will I be upset? Absolutely. Um, but with that being said, at the end of the day, if you're still pushing for the right policies, I can get past it. I'm trying to get past it with Warren. But again, I'm setting my expectations incredibly low because I'm embedding disappointment into my expectations so I can move on from 2020 and we don't have another 2016 on our hands. So I'll leave that there.